What's going on guys? I'm here today with something that has never been on my channel before, but definitely cool. The Bond Arms Roughneck. All right, so some of the best guns are found used at gun shops. And this is one of those gems. Never discount used guns, because most times used guns are never fired or very rarely fired. So it's like getting a brand new gun at a deep, deep discount. So lesson one for the day. Lesson two is if you are really into pocket guns that derringer style pistol something you can throw in your pocket these are the things of the past that people carried around as a pocket gun for self-defense now these days with skinny jeans good luck putting something like this in your pocket it's not the smallest or the thinnest firearm but definitely has that cool factor definitely winter wear jacket pocket, something when you're in a little bit more baggy clothes, easy to get to, great, great option. Now again, I picked this up used. I've only shot it one time, 38 Special. This is 38 Special, 357 Magnum. So beggars can't be choosers. I picked up what I found. I probably, if I would have bought something new, would have gotten a nine mil. But 38 Special, is is pretty cool to me i got 38 special and if you really want to get spicy you put them 357 loads in there and really pack a wallop so we're going to shoot some 357 today we're going to shoot some 38 special and see really what it's like out of this small gun something that these bond arms derringers got going for them is they're pretty robust i mean this thing is is hefty it's got some weight to it it feels very solid and one of the other cool things is you know once you have one of these you, you pretty much are buying the receiver, right? The frame. So you can buy various different barrel lengths and calibers and swap out via this screw here at the top. This thing would just come off, just hinges there, and you can put a, you want a longer barrel on it or a different caliber. You can do those sorts of things with this platform. So that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, the barrel setup's gonna be a couple hundred bucks, um, but it's better than buying like a whole new one. Something else to note on these is how it loads and how it shoots. So with this lever right here, you take that down, loosens the barrel, open it up, put your rounds in right here, and then close it up. Also, when you're ejecting rounds, you have this little thing here. When you open it, it does help you a little bit. It does uh, spring activate this thing to push it out, but you are gonna have to push this a little bit more to get that to really eject the rounds. And when I say eject, I don't mean they shoot out, they just pop out far enough for you to grab them and pull them out. You would reload and then close it. Being this is a Derringer style gun, it is single action only. So every time you pull the hammer, it's not bang, bang, it's bang, pull again, bang, two shots. Some people will set this up to shoot top first, bottom second. Other people will do bottom first, Top second. You can set that up in the way that it alternates. So every time you shoot it, depending on when you load it or how you actuate the hammer in between you know, loads, will determine if it's top or bottom. There's a little mechanism that's gonna be kind of hard to see, but it alternates between top and bottom. So the hammer will in, internally here will strike either the bottom pin and then switch to the top pin. And there's a little spring in there and there's a little uh, the hammer, you can kind of see which way it's tilted to let you know which way is which. I've never really been concerned with it because it's not something I'd, I'm really carrying at this point. But it is kind of cool to know, okay, well, I mean, it's close range. Is it really going to matter? A couple feet away, which barrel fires first? Probably not. But you can set it up to fire whichever barrel you want first if you really want to try to be accurate with it at some sort of distance. Last but not least, it does have a cross bolt safety here. So push it in, red is fire. Push it back the other way, you are on safety. It blocks uh, the areas for the firing pin. So enough talking about it. Let's shoot it, see what happens. 
All right, guys, just got some target loads, 38 special, 130 grain. So let's load it up. Like as I said, I've only done it once before. See how it goes. Let's do it. Probably gonna do the old one-handed shoot first. See how it goes. Here we go. Safety off, let's do it. See there. Push this out, gives you a little bit of a boost. Pull it out, reload. Something that's weird about this is the way the trigger feels and the way you have to press the trigger. Because this is a really small grip, now listen, I don't have huge hands. Get two fingers on this thing, right? Well, when you come down, it's sort of a weird angle, so when you wanna kinda of bring your hand down, you wanna rest it right here. And it feels like a good spot because it's like right in that groove, but really you can't, and I'll demonstrate this here, you can't like push the trigger there. This is where your figure wants to go, but you can't push it. You actually have to kind of bring it down to this portion and it's a weird, it's a weird reach. That's the only way you can push it. It's a really weird, you kind of have to like contort your hand some and I can't quite understand how to get that without bringing your finger down. It's like a weird, you almost have to kind of use like a weird one finger grip to get your finger down far enough to pull that trigger. It's a, it's a, I don't know, it feels awkward. It doesn't feel natural. Like I feel like if I were to pull it out, if I was gonna use it, right? Pull it out of your pocket, you cock the hammer, and in that way, it feels okay. Cock the hammer. I don't know what, I don't know why that first round it felt so weird, but feeling like, let's try it again. Take the off. It's, it's something to get used to. I mean, it's not bad, it's just, it's a weird, man, it's just like a weird feel in your hand. I'm not used to shooting one hand a lot, so I'm used to coming up and you wanna shoot it with two hands. I mean, it, it fits in your hand. I mean, again, I don't have large hands and two fingers is all I can get on there. It's just a weird, definitely, okay, I would say this. Definitely, if you want to carry one of these as a pocket gun, you got to get familiar with how it shoots and how it feels because if you actually need to use it, you're going to want to know how to present it because to me, again, this is the second time shooting it, to me, it's a little awkward. Let's do it again. That time it wasn't that bad. So, get used to it. Guys, again, with the 38 Special and the weight of this thing, there's really no recoil. I mean, it feels perfectly fine. Um, doesn't hurt the hand. So, Let's spice it up and go 357. All right, guys, spicy boy stuff. Target loads, 158 grain, 357. This should be significantly more felt recoil in my hand. Let's see. Whew. Never done 357 before. So, woo! Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, little sting on the hand, nothing crazy. Uh, because I shoot, you know, those, those big boy, like the 4570 revolvers and Smith & Wesson 500, I've had have experience with those. Uh, nothing compares to those as far as felt recoil in your hand. Uh, don't get me wrong, this does sting a little bit, uh, but nothing like those big calibers. So this is actually, for me, uh, 
it's manageable, it's not bad. Uh, but let's throw a couple more in and see how it goes. Round two, 357 Spicy Boy. It's not bad. It's really not that bad, to be honest with you. I mean, you feel it, it thumps your hand a little bit, stings for a second, but manageable. I mean, you're not gonna be shooting this all day. It just feels like a really hefty, uh, solid piece. All right, so what I got here is exactly five yards away. I've got a small taped off area on that backer. I'm gonna do 38 special target loads. And I'm just gonna see how accurate this is gonna be on more of just like that quick draw if you're gonna use it in that sort of scenario. Now, mind you, you know, depending on the situation, you're probably gonna be in a little closer than this if you're using something like this as sort of that really close, like five feet in type of thing if you have to. Um, but let's just see what it's like at this five yards. See if I can hit anything, actually doing my best to aim quickly. So let's do it. Yep, I missed it. No idea actually where I hit it because there's, <laughs> there's holes all around it. Let's try it again. All right, so let's try to actually aim it this time. I hit it somewhere, just have no idea where. So let's try to aim it and see what happens. I think I'm pulling down low. Let's try it one more time. This is a fail right here. Do it again. No idea. I have no idea where it's hitting. No idea. Let's try closer. Okay. I hit it. I was probably three yards away. Hit it top left-ish corner. I was a little left. Now let's try it again. Back at five yards. I know kind of where to hold on this thing. The sights. Something else to note is the sights. It's kind of a tricky setup. Big front posts, small rears. Kind of blends in there. Anyway, it's really not supposed to be aimed. It's kind of like a point shoot. Let's do it one more time. The more I shoot this, the more I feel like it is certainly very close, couple feet away where you know you're, you know for sure you're gonna hit something. I mean, this barrel is super short. You put the rounds in, there's probably like a quarter of an inch maybe of, of barrel length, of rifling. So, you know, it's, it's probably coming out there. It's not stabilized very well. At distance, it's probably tumbling. It's just not gonna be accurate gun at a distance for me right now. But at five yards, let's try it again to see if I can get on paper aiming it. Here we go. There we go, dead center. Slightly low and left. So, point shoot gun, moral of the story. I wouldn't take it out five yards. This is not, to me, a five yard gun. It is a very close, up close and personal gun. Ladies and gentlemen, what have we learned here today about the Bond Arms Roughneck? Well, in my hands, this is a up close and personal, holding somebody off, point shoot, standoff device, in the gut, bang, bang. Nothing for me that I would trust myself without many extensive rounds practicing, shooting, at even five yards. Now, mind you, I am aiming at what would be like a six by six square. So it's not the biggest target. Obviously, the backer itself is more man size. So I was hitting the target somewhere. I just don't know where with this setup. So would you hit something? Could I have hit something if it was a person standing there at five yards? Sure. Under stress, with this setup, cocking the hammer, kind of a weird trigger. With practice, under stress, sure. 
Um, something I didn't ever really shoot and just threw in my jacket pocket just as a just in case. Ooh, might be kind of hard to say for sure if I'd be confident to hit something at five yards, probably shaking it around and pulling out and trying to be, you know, save my life. So back up, last ditch effort, sort of on your back type of gun, shit hits the fan and you're up close and personal, definitely, in my opinion. So guys, quirks and features abound with this thing. Very cool, I dig it. I'm glad I picked it up. So all right guys, don't forget, Steve MP5 on the Instagrams. I'll see you next time.